Oh, hey. Oh, is this the raid? I... Oh! Hello, hello! I... Did it... Is it Dr. K raid? <gasps> Dr. K's raiding? Oh my gosh! So good to see you! I didn't get the notification that the raid was coming! Welcome back, friends! Welcome back! So good to see everyone! Oh my gosh! Oh, my channel would not be where it is if it were not for that first Dr. K raid. So I appreciate this so much. I'm so excited. And I actually have a mod in here today. <laughs> So if you guys remember, the first time you guys came in for the raid, I had no idea what I was doing. I just started streaming. I had no mod. It was so funny. <laughs> and what, things went so fast. I had no idea what was going on. Um, but um, your community has become my community. And um, I have been lurking on Dr. K's channel all the time. I listen and I just am so appreciative that there's somebody who is helping so many people um, talking about mental health and mindfulness. Um, and I am so, so touched to be a part of this. So thank you so much. I would love a collaboration with Dr. K. Who wants to see Dr. K doing Tai Chi? <laughs> Who would want to see Dr. K doing Tai Chi? <laughs> so if Dr. K, if you're ever interested in that, oh my gosh, I am so down with that. <laughs> but you know what? Um, Tai Chi is kind of a boomer thing, isn't it? It's like that's <laughs> what people think. Um, and I don't know if Dr. K is more boomer than me. Like, I don't, uh, I might be older than him. <laughs> is Dr. K only 37? Is that, no, really? Am I that much older? <laughs> I'm 46. I turned 46 on December 4th, so in 2021, I actually turned 47, so I am way more boomer than anyone in this community. <laughs> so, thanks. <laughs> but that's like what Tai Chi does. Like, I think if you think about the people who do Tai Chi and um, just kind of practice a Tai Chi way of being, um, then you, you're not stressed. If you learn how to exist without stress, then imagine just how much lighter everything is. And if you're body just functions better and your mind just functions better, I promise you will feel and look younger too. Like that's, um, so that's why I am here to teach you. Like I call and we coined it on stream. I don't think we coined it yet when, um, Dr. K read it the first time. Um, but Taiji, Qigong, these things that I do, they're, these are esoteric names. They don't connect with people. It's like this, they don't really have much meaning. But I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been on this journey for 20 years. And what I realized, um, and because we are, we love Avatar in our community. That's like the one thing that we love. We love Avatar. Um, and we coined on stream, like what we're doing is actually stress bending. Like we're becoming stress benders when we practice these arts, you know, so that's, um, you know, what I say I'm teaching, I'm teaching stress bending. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, what we do. And if you know, if you are a fan of avatar, then you'll know that the different elements actually were inspired by different Chinese martial arts. So Taiji, what I do 
that inspired water bending. So when you see water bending, um, you know, it would be very reminiscent to Tai Chi. Like, you know, for example, uh, like, you can just kind of imagine that water is being controlled, right? That's, that's, Taiji, that's water bending. Uh, yeah, right? Um, and then uh, air bending. That was inspired by Bagua. So, Bagua, that's another internal martial art. Circle walking. Right? You see? So, that's um, air bending, inspired by Bagua. Fire bending was inspired by Northern Shaolin Kung Fu, All right? And then uh, earth bending was inspired by Hungar, which is a Southern uh, Chinese Kung Fu. So I actually did a stream, it was really fun, where we did an avatar-inspired workout. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna be stress benders. Uh, we are going to do exercises that help us function better, breathe better, get that chi to circulate in our body. Oh, how does Tai Chi help reduce stress? Well, this is a Taoist concept. So one of my channel point redemptions is a reading from this book called The Essence of Tai Chi Chuan. And um, I always refer back to the yin yang. The yin yang is a philosophy. It is more than just a symbol. I, I talk about how this symbol has become a meme. It's just a static symbol that has no meaning. This symbol has such deep meaning behind it. And it's all about duality and change and balance. Um, like this is meant to be viewed as a moving thing that the world is a duality of opposites trying to oppose and balance each other and it's constantly changing and you have to be able to accept that that duality and the changes are a part of life because so much of our modern life is trying to control everything that like we're trying to control and we're trying to fix and we don't want to see the other side. So we think that, you know, everything should just be our way, our view. And um, in this Taoist philosophy, it's saying that no matter what you think things should be, there will always be another side. If there's up, there's down. If there's left, there's right. And that's just the way that it is. You can't will that to not be. So you have to accept it. And it's always changing and always balancing. Um, so, you know, first that is just the way that it is. Um, and then also, if you look at this image again, you'll notice how at the biggest of one, it turns into the other, right? So this is also constantly changing. At the end of one extreme, will go into the beginning of the other. And that's the um, philosophy and the concept. Um, so this is a way of life that you just kind of accept so you have a better time dealing with change and then the coolest part is now you take it into um force and how you react to force and change and conflict and for me this is the most fascinating because this is the coolest part about Taiji. um and i did do a stream and that's going to be my next youtube video is taking the stream where it's about how do you react to force and conflict because the natural reaction when you get pushed is you resist and push back. It's just very natural. You feel a push happening and you resist, you push back. You have this sense of, you know, 
I'm not going to let you push me. I got to hunker down. I got to push back. And whoever is stronger is going to win. But what happens there? Like both of you get exhausted and whoever is physically stronger is going to be the one who wins. That's not our approach in Tai Chi. Our approach at Tai Chi is imagine you become like water. So why can somebody push you? Like if you think about the force that happens when somebody pushes, right? They need something to push against, right? It's, it's because you resist, you give the other person power to push. So in Tai Chi, it's about learning how to not tense. The moment we tense, we give somebody um, something to push. So if somebody pushes, then you follow their energy and you don't resist. But it's not about just retreating either. Like you don't want to just retreat until you're stuck in a corner. Um, you want to be able to just make that space for you to do what you want to do. Right? You just be able to have things kind of like part out of your way. Um, and when you resist, you're actually generating a reaction from somebody to actually you know, block your way. If you just intend for that energy to fall away, then you can just go and go. Okay, do lotus cakes. So I owe lotus cakes. Okay, so um, five gift subs. Let me stretch out. So I do five lotus cakes to thank for the subs, but I just started the stream, so I'm not warmed up yet. So, okay, give me a moment. All right, five lotus kicks for you. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you for those subs. Really, really appreciate it. The yin yang symbol intentionally clockwise. Beer 404. That's such a great question. There is no right or wrong. Like the yin yang, this like picture of it is a snap in this moment in its rotation. Think of it more as a 3D image of um, a ball constantly changing. That's the better way to think about the yin yang. There is no right or wrong orientation because it's always moving in every direction. Um, and for um, us in Taiji, that's also how we need to be is we need to be relaxed so that we can move in every direction. Nick, I do not feel like I am immune to stress, um, but my body doesn't, it, it knows when it's coming and then it can adjust itself because that, that's training. I think that one of the biggest benefits of Taiji is that like when you're doing it, you're not, at least in our school, we approach it as its authentic form of an internal martial art. We're a martial arts school and it's not this like artificially relaxed environment where, um, you know, I, I think that so many people are caught up in this cycle where you get stressed out, like you're dealing with work, family, school, like whatever it is that you get stressed out and then you get to that level where you just can't take it anymore and then you have to go de-stress. So then you go into this artificial environment, you turn down the lights, you play the quiet music and then you can go and de-stress. But 
then you go back into your natural environment and then you get stressed out again because like that's the cycle like you get stressed and then you go and de-stress get stressed and then you go de-stress um in taiji when we're doing these movements where you know we're teaching you how to do these do these movements there are complicated sequences we don't give you a nice quiet environment there's a lot going on and you have to practice and stay focused right so you learn your body learns how to just relax in a chaotic environment and then if your body has learned how to relax physically in a chaotic environment then you go back to your normal day and your body has learned how to just um kind of feel where those tensions were so for me the biggest thing was when i was driving it was like maybe like you know a year into learning tai chi um and i was sitting in traffic and you know traffic you're like you're you just feel those shoulders coming up and you know i i my i noticed that my body just kind of adjusted itself like it just felt that the tension was coming up and it just adjusted itself because it was trained like that's what we do is we're training you to learn how to feel the tensions and relax and we do that because tai chi as a martial art just doesn't work unless you know how to do that so when you know how to do that then that stays with you throughout your day you know so i saw requests for a tongue wide challenge this is a fitness goal that i have for myself i can't do it yet so we're trying to do this as a community that's why i have a channel point redemption for it so we can all work on it as a community and then you take what piece of it you can do um and uh you know you probably won't be able to do the whole thing but you just take what you can do and then make that a little bit better so that's our challenge this was created by Stephen Tung Wai. He's a Hong Kong action star. He's a martial artist, um, stunt uh, um, uh, man, and fight choreographer. And he um, issued this challenge. So it's out in the Chinese martial arts um, community. And I'm bringing it on Twitch. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see if you can do this with me. The Tung Wai Challenge. Feet together and keeping your legs straight. Bend down, your hands touch the floor. Okay, keeping your heels on the floor, legs straight. You walk out three hand lengths. Make fists. Your thumbs come up. And keeping your legs straight and your heels on the floor, you kiss your thumbs. So, I can't do that yet. I can't go all the way yet. <laughs> you fell over. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing that we are working on the community you find what is your range and then you go a little bit more each time it's a difficult challenge for sure usually like what we're doing is not like too challenging like that it's breathing stretching movements how about we do something that we can all do. So I want you to experience chi with me. So who here has experienced chi? I know if you're coming from Dr. K, you're very open to um, feeling energy, like to, you know, because that's one of the biggest thing is your own mental barrier in accepting 
reflecting um, you know that that sense of energy so I know if you are coming from factor K's community you already are more open to awareness it's just opening up awareness um, so this concept is the chi is all around you um, and it's this chi that needs to circulate in your body for you to be healthy like if you want your like why do we get sick like why is it that you get sick it's because one of the internal organs isn't functioning the way it should Right, but it's like the bacteria and the viruses are doing something that's inhibiting some part of your body from doing the job that it's supposed to do. So you're not regulated, your body's not regulated. Something, your lung is not working the way that it should, or your heart, or your um, intestines, you know, all of these internal organs have a job. Um, even your brain in traditional Chinese medicine, your brain is a part of your body, right? So with these exercises that we do is to get that circulation flowing so that our organs can all function better. So the more we can get that circulation improved, then the better our bodies will function. So we need to have the outside, the vessel to be strong, but we also need the inside to have that the plumbing to all work, right? So if you think about a house, the house, I, we treat our bodies like if we had a house that has foundation that's crumbling and the pipes don't work, but we put all of the money on like new windows and nice siding, right? Like I, <laughs> if you like think about you know, how you are like treating your body and what you focus on like if you only have and most people you don't really have much time to um spend on health and fitness right because you have busy lives and when you do have time um, are you really spending that time on the things that are going to make you healthy on the inside? Or are you spending time on those things that are like toning and sculpting that don't really matter? Like they might look nice, but in terms of fitness and health don't really matter. So that's kind of like if you, you know, have a house and the foundation's crumbling and the pipes aren't connected and they don't work and you have no running water and you blow all of your money on new windows like what is that going to do for you so that what we do these exercises it's about focusing on the stabilizing muscles that will help you with your posture and then helping you to be able to improve the functioning of your organs um, and then you'll feel these amazing feelings uh, when the circulation actually starts flowing you feel the chi in your hands so we're gonna do some of that now do you, you want to uh, try it out experience um, because if you have never felt chi flowing it is a really really cool thing to feel <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, you take one G. All right, so the most important thing is relaxing, connecting your mind with your body, right? So your mind can't be on other things. Your mind has to tune in and you have to develop some awareness to what your body is doing. So it's some awareness training here. The breath is going to be in through the nose and then up and out through the nose. So that's why. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's okay. Do it. Sitting down is totally fine. Everything that we do, um, sitting, uh, standing up, you can do sitting down. Oh, Yanner, um, how can you learn more from me? If you want to deepen um, the learning, uh, I have a Patreon. We have um, instructional videos and monthly workshops. And I'm going to be putting more stuff up on YouTube also. Oh, two star towns. Your dad loves Taiji. Wonderful. That's right. That's right. We're doing some Qigong. So Qigong is, I would say, like a cousin of Taiji. Taiji is an internal martial art. Qigong is about cultivating your qi. There's a lot where they they connect, but then they also diverge because they have different goals. So right now we're going to do some qigong. I want you to get greedy. The palms, right in the middle of the palm, there's a point here called the laogong point. This is on the pericardium meridian. And this is where you will feel qi um, more than anywhere else. Like when you feel uh, the energy flowing, you're going to feel it in your palms. And I want you to imagine that your palms are sucking in the energy from the ground. And it's sucking in the energy from the heavens. And then you're going to bring it into yourself. Right? And you're going to do this by keeping your shoulders relaxed, letting the arms just hang down. Yeah, we will throw some fireballs. We'll do that after here. Feet shoulder width apart. Just let yourself be comfortable. We're trying to loosen up the lower back here. So just try to relax here. Relax your abdomen. Relax your chest. Just let yourself just relax. Shoulders relax. Feet shoulder width apart. Now, inhale and let the hands come up. And imagine you are sucking the energy up from the ground. Exhale. Let the palms turn up. Keeping your shoulders down. Inhale. And imagine you are sucking the energy out of the sky. Bringing it into your palms. Exhale, let the hands hover over your head and then bring this energy into your body. Feel the energy transferring from your hands to your body. Down, shoulders stay relaxed. Inhale, shoulders stay down. Be greedy. Feel this energy getting sucked into your palms. Exhale, turn the palms face up. Inhale, shoulders stays relaxed. Feel this energy getting sucked from the sky into your palms. Exhale, direct this energy over your head. Bring it to the front. Let this energy transfer from your hands to your face. Down the body. Bringing this energy into yourself. Let the shoulders relax. Do this again a few times. Just fully relax your arms and shoulders. The breath goes right into your palms as you inhale. And as you do that, just imagine you are sucking all this energy up from the ground into your palms. Exhale, turn the palms up. Inhale. Shoulders stays relaxed. Suck this energy up from the sky into your palms. Exhale, direct it over your head down and bring it into yourself one more time all right and just feel this energy 
coming up from the ground into your palms. Exhale, turn the palms up. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, down. And now keep the hands in front of your body here. Shoulder stays relaxed. Try to have the fingertips in line with each other. Shoulders relaxed and down. Yes. You should feel a magnetic feeling in your body. Shoulders relax. And you just kind of direct your hand in front of this area, right below the navel. This is where the chi lives in your body. It's called the dantian. And we just feel this exchange of energy here. Shoulders relax, arms relax. Just let yourself relax. Now, bring the hands. The palm faces the palm. Keeping your shoulders relaxed, arms relaxed. Inhale and feel your breath pulls the hands apart a little bit. Exhale, feel the exhale, bringing the hands together a little bit. Not with your muscle, just with your breath. So imagine when you inhale, the two poles separate your hand out. When you exhale, feel the palms coming back together. Inhale. Exhale. And you can do this up and down as well. Palm to palm. Shoulders stay relaxed. Shoulders stay down. So purely with your breath. Inhale. Let them separate. Exhale. Bring them closer together. Feel it in your breath. And just explore this feeling. Inhale. Thank you so much. Exhale. And see how it feels when they get closer together. Inhale. Exhale. Did you feel something here? Did you feel like there's some sort of a pulsation? There's like magnetism, right? It's like when the hands, yeah, you feel your hands are warm, you feel like a magnetic energy. That's chi. Uh, um, there's like a tension, right? When it gets closer, it's kind of like the same poles of a magnet coming together. There's just like an energy that you can feel. And then, yeah, like a tingling. So sometimes the push away happens when you exhale. Yeah, so all of these are, you know, such interesting feelings. There's no right or wrong. This is chi. And this is there all the time. So chi, like it's this mystical um, concept to so many people, but it's not really this esoteric thing. The more modern translations of chi is your body's bioelectricity, right? We all have bioelectricity. That is what powers our life. And it's this bioelectricity that we want to circulate. We want to make it strong. Because if you think like if you have stronger bioelectricity and that current flows, right, then that is going to power the your body, make your organs function better. So, you know, this that you feel here yeah, that's what we want to flow through our bodies there. I do feel like um, chi can heal, but it's not so interesting. Um, and we've done this on stream too, where 
Um, and you have to be receptive to it. You have to really get in the feeling of it where, um, you know, I give energy like, and you receive the energy, but that receiving of the energy is all you, it's all you. So, you know, I feel like, you know, that energy that somebody gives, um, and if it heals, the healing is actually not so much from the person giving it, but from the person receiving it. Um, I, I relate a story that it was so fascinating. My first experience with Qi was when I went to Shanghai and I was 17 um, and I spent some time with the Qigong master in Shanghai and um, like the craziest stuff happened. Like I cannot even explain the things that I was doing and feeling. It was just really like insane. Uh, um, and he told me if I ever needed Qi, to take it just think of him and his family because his entire family were qigong masters him his wife and his two sons they were all qigong masters not drugs not drugs i mean because i was 17 i just graduated high school and i was a weak sickly um teenage girl i had injuries from um you know i've just been um, peppered with injuries my my whole entire life and so that's why my mom took me to this chico master because i was just like such a weak sickly teenager um and uh he just gave me chi and like his son gave me chi and it was just the craziest thing i started busting out martial arts moves i didn't study martial arts back then but i started busting out martial arts moves because they were just kind of like like making it happen it's crazy um and uh then i you know came back and they told me if i ever needed chi to just think of them and take it but after I take it, then intend my gratitude back to them, you know? So, um, and I thought that it was just this fascinating thing. So little Jack Frost, what makes a magnetic feeling appear and disappear? Your awareness, purely your awareness. It's always there. So the chi, um, flows when you're relaxed. So when I take you through the exercises and I walk you through it, your mind's focused on me, right? My words, you're following the, the prompts and you're able to relax yourself into the movement and you become aware. But usually we are not relaxed. We're tense. We're in bad posture. So if you're sitting, you're sitting like this how can you breathe well when you're sitting like this right you're like this you're compressed next compressed when you feel all of that tension um then you, that you can't breathe so when i took you through those exercises you know hopefully you also felt like you were in a better alignment because you're watching me so you're mimicking my posture so you're putting yourself into a better posture like if you can sit with your head up just bring your head up and back but chin tucked under so it's like you're suspended from a string head on top of your neck on top of your spine shoulders relax this relieves the tension in your neck and your shoulders and you can breathe better okay you know there are a lot of different um you know tidy practitioners out there they have different goals so some people just do it for a gentle exercise um and there really is no chi cultivation there. Uh, but if you study it authentically and study it as an internal martial art, you have to cultivate chi because um, it's the chi that you then um, uh, transform into uh, uh, like power. So every 
Taiji person who I know who studies it as an internal martial art also practices qigong because without qi we have nothing in in、um, then we just have empty movements that don't have any meaning to them. Yeah, yeah like I think that、um, Anzac, I. Do think that qi can help with sports psychology because qi can't flow if you're tense.、Um, so if you have that qi flowing and you know that it's flowing, that means that you've relaxed. And everybody knows that、uh, somebody relaxed is going to be、um, performing at a much higher level than somebody tense. And doesn't matter what it is that they do; it could be sports, it could be gaming, you know, anything, right? If you're tense all the time, you're not going to perform at your peak. You know? So, um, so, uh, crid, um, do you generate more chi in nature at home? It is, um, where you, so you feel more chi out in nature. Like because you have the trees and the wind and that organic、um, feeling, you will feel it more. But、um, if you practice qigong in one area in your home and you keep practicing there, then that qi will build up there and it will accumulate there, and then it will become so powerful. And then that's where you're going to want to practice. So it's really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> the other、uh, no. So that's like another thing that you know, like there's a lot of really cool things that she can do, but you know there are、uh, also a lot of things where it's just like a fantasy story. So you know we can、um, actually like throw. Out fireballs,、um, but you can feel a ball of energy, and that energy you can feel like this exercise that、um, I had you do, right? And if you felt that magnetic energy, now imagine you're in a large room with many, many people. You can feel this energy just accumulating in the room between everyone, and then there's like when you do group practice, you can、um, you end. Where you put palm over somebody else's palm, and you just feel this like、um, energy that transfers between people. It's a really cool feeling. Panda bears, yeah. So when you start becoming in tune with your own energy, then you can feel that energy between people, right? So part of、um, You know, so why do you go into different channels for their different vibes? It's the energy that you feel, right? So you know, hopefully, you came in here and our conversations and everything. Like it is like, even if you started off like really stressed out and angry, like、um, it's. Really hard to leave my streams feeling stressed out and angry, like you know that because that's not the energy that we generate. So like you feel that, and then now when we get into、um, tai chi as a martial art in terms of feeling each other's energy and force,、um, you can't control what other people do, right? Like, and I think that's a、uh, uh, one of the Biggest problems that people、uh, that, that that causes people a lot of stress is you want to control how the other person reacts and behaves. So if somebody is angry with you, yelling at you, pushing at you, you know maybe not physically, but you know maybe you know mentally, emotionally, they're pushing at you,、um, and you want to control that to stop. Right, and that sense of needing to control, that pushing back, that need to like resist,、um, you are giving the other person fuel to escalate their aggression more. It's just natural. Like you feel like, I, and I do this workshop all the time for my corporate wellness.、Um, uh, Programs that I do,、uh, because there's a lot of conflict resolution that、um, you know happens.、Uh, there, there's a lot of conflict in the corporate environment, you know. So yeah, I had a, a, 
a long finance career before I made the switch to teach Tai Chi full time. So I was in finance leadership positions and, you know, so I really understand corporate <laughs> um, the co work conflict. So one of the things that I do is I have two people pushing against each other and um, it's just this instinctive reaction that you feel feel somebody push and you resist and then that resistance makes somebody want to push harder and it's this cycle and that causes um, a lot of tension and stress so the idea is how do you train your body to react in a different way where instead of resisting you know, what if you give them nothing to push and you just redirect? Um, when you do that, not only does it help you feel better because you're not exhausting yourself trying to push back, it also takes away the energy from the other person. It's like letting a balloon deflate and then then they'll probably just leave you alone, right? And, and then like the, the, the thing with the Tai Chi approach to life is I just want to do my thing. <laughs> like I just want to do my thing, go my way, and um, then I'm not going to care about what you're doing over there. Um, you do whatever you want over there. You can like shout at me from over there, but if it's not, doesn't get in my way of where I want to go, I don't really care. It's only when it comes at me, um, does, uh, do I care? And I don't want to just retreat. I, I want to go this way. So I, you know, how can I just make you go away so I can keep going and, um, you know, resisting that urge to want to just hit back. I, I think that traditions need to be relevant for them to continue. And Tai Chi and Qigong, these are traditions that I think like even more so now in modern society, we need it. It's like, it's the thing that you didn't know was missing in your life until you try it and experience it. And then you feel like, oh, wow, my shoulders can actually feel this good without pain like my back can actually like be without pain i didn't even know that was possible like it's like that kind of thing yeah yeah i like tc i'm like acupuncture with tai chi actually go really well together i mean acupuncture is just good acupuncture is a treatment you know so that is like if and and that's the whole point like um i i also will bust out this book too because traditional chinese medicine is all about the meridians that run through your body you know so um we did a stretch earlier today where i had you massage down the back of your legs um and the side of your legs so in traditional chinese medicine we have these meridians that run through the body with acupoints along these meridians so along the side of your legs is your gallbladder meridian so if you have a problem with your gallbladder, um, then you go to an acupuncturist, they'll stick needles, they might stick it in your ankle here. You're like, why are you sticking a, a needle in my ankle when I have, you know, an issue with my gallbladder? Well, that's Chinese medicine theory is we have these meridian channels and acupoints along. And um, the idea is the organ isn't functioning because there's a blockage. So you unblock, but it's a treatment. Right? It's not, it just temporarily unblocks. So you have to keep going back. So that's why people practice things like Qigong so that your body can uh, clear those blockages naturally yourself. And, you know, it also needs to go with lifestyle changes too. Like you can't only just practice Qigong if you have a really bad diet and you're not doing any kind of activity. Oh, yeah, so Dr. K came in with a raid to me um, and his amazing community is still here. Um, and like those of you who know that my channel, um, uh, 
like really started <laughs> it was a, a small little channel that was kind of really just for my students who i brought onto twitch because when i had to shut down my school i decided to come and teach on twitch so my my channel was really um really really small and um when dr k raided me that first time introduced me to so many more people um that's when and my um, channel started to grow and it's um, even like, you know, some of the, the people who became integral to my community um, came from Dr. K's first raid. So like, so touched, so, so touched. Dr. K is a wizard. Like I, I um, was listening to his interview with Ludwig and um, like, the, the, so I'm sure you guys saw that, right? Because, you know, I have to admit, like, I don't know who a lot of these, um, YouTubers and Twitch streamers are. I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I know if Dr. K's interviewing somebody, then they are a big streamer. Like, I wouldn't know who they were. Um, it, uh, <laughs> That's how I'm learning who are the big names because I, I I just like don't know this realm of the internet. <laughs> yeah, Cookie, he does perform mind bending. You feel like your shoulders are completely stuck and you're only 27. That's because like we're like this. Like, are you on the computer all day? Like that. So let those shoulders drop down and you just have to become aware of it so i'm going to take you guys through an exercise this is sensory okay this is a sensory exercise um it will require you to uh be in it though it doesn't work if you're not in it if you can just keep your shoulders relaxed and notice when they start creeping up, it goes a long way. It goes a long way, but it all works together. So relaxing your chest is letting that chest sink in and drop down, relaxing the abdomen and the pelvis, relaxing the shoulders, right? So the feeling is always down always down shoulders relax now imagine that your hands are on a balloon two balloons floating up don't lift up purely in your mind imagine visualize balloons under your hands okay so that's why you need to really just be in it let the hands float up with the balloons shoulders relax and let them come up without lifting just visualize the hands are on balloons floating up now here let the shoulders drop, elbows relax, and imagine I have my arms under your arms. Feel like my arm supporting your arm. That feeling where you can just let it go and the support is there. Imagine your elbow is sinking down your arms and your hands can relax down. Your shoulders can drop. That you don't have to use your muscles to hold them up. Visualize a support under your arms and let them drop all the way down. And in your mind, keep that support there. Even when I take my arm away, imagine that the support is there where the shoulders are down. The elbows are down. Right? 
the hands can still be up at shoulder height, but the shoulders don't have to be up. Feel like there's that support under. Feel what your shoulders feel like. Drop down. Okay, can let it down. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, it's um having uh, uh th this amazing pocket on Twitch of people who care about mindfulness, about the mind body connection. Um, uh, it's just it's it's amazing. It's really amazing. Like people have such a um, uh, they they don't have a full people who aren't on Twitch don't realize how there are amazing pockets on, uh, on, on Twitch where uh, you're just awesome streamers and channels that really care about um, things that are important. Like what Dr. K does is so important. You know, because so many people need his real talk to help guide. So his coaching, the healthy gamer coaching, there's a real need and like heart support. I stream on the heart support stream team and heart support and the heart support um, streamers fill a need um, that is just um, really missing in um, our, our society. So just that, to be able to be a part of that um, is so rewarding for me. Um, uh, yeah, and then, you know, get to share my esoteric art that, um, you know, I think you know, has great benefits too for people who are trying to um, preserve their mental health and, and have tools that can help them with, you know, all of these things that are conflict management, but it's like our training is physical. So like you can approach the training in many different ways. Um, my approach is, you know, you, for me, me personally, it's a lot harder for me to control what happens here. You know, so I take the approach to training here. And when this can relax, this comes along with the ride. So, you know, when I do meditation, it's all about listening to where the tensions are in your body. And when you can relax those tensions, then your breathing can start evening out and slowing down. And then you just start feeling like the tensions in your mind start relaxing, releasing too. Well, yeah, kind of like a self-hypnosis. Uh, yeah, a bit, I think. Yeah, change the state of mind. Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's so hard to, for me at least, to do it from here. But it's like when I um, do Tai Chi, and a lot of times for me, like, I, I, I really enjoy doing it when I am in an agitated state. So it's like, you know, there's a misconception that um, Taiji masters are Zen masters and they're just always like these peaceful hermits and calm, um, you know, they're people also experiencing everything that everybody else experiences. But what we learn how to do is we learn how to channel and change that energy. So that's when I feel the biggest transformation is when I am agitated and I'm not settled and I'm worrying about something and there's all of this, um, you know, that, 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 that feeling of heaviness and, you know, it's still energy though, right? It, it's still energy. Whether you're feeling um, that energy is a soothing energy, calm energy or turbulent energy, it's still all energy. So then I take that in. So it's like, okay, now I can take that and I can use that and I can channel that and then I can change it. So rewarding to then change that energy. It's like in with each motion, I can transform that energy into something that's a little bit more peaceful.
So then by the end of it, It's calm, right? So you have the power to transform that energy in yourself. And you just need to really go into it. Can't escape from it, right? So you can't make that transformation if you just escape. Like you go into it, really tap into it and use that energy and then you can transform it. Uh, Hey, Ipad, how did you stay calm the first time you got the rate of thousands? Um, honestly, when it first happened, I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> like, when you are that green and that clueless, um, you don't understand the enormity of the situation. <laughs> If you remember, I was um, on the ground stretching when that happened, and um, I don't think I um, even had, so that was before I even had any overlays. So there wasn't even like a, an alert that told me that there was a raid. Um, so all I knew was like, there was a lot of movement. And then, you know, at that time, very embarrassed. I'm really, really embarrassed to say at that time, I didn't know who Dr. K was. Um, you know, so like that was, that was like, I, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, for, oh, <laughs> when I become bigger, I guess, like that's, <laughs> isn't that like kind of the sign that you have become a big streamer is you, you get to do an interview with Dr. K. <laughs> so if I ever get to become uh, that level of uh, success on Twitch, I would love to. <laughs> so I just started a YouTube channel. So I, I'm, I've been doing Taiji for 20 years now and I um, run a school. I Before that, I um, had my, my career was in finance and I had this dual kind of career um, doing Taiji and finance. And then I quit my finance career to take over the Taiji school full time. Um, a little earlier than the plan. My plan was after my master retired, um, and then I would take over the school. I could do it with early retirement at the age of 55 with full pension and all my benefits. I had this like amazing plan mapped out for myself. It was like um, really the best plan, but things don't happen according to plan. You can like have the best plan and things just aren't going to follow that plan. So my master moved to Austin. And so I had to make a decision um, if I wanted to take over the school and I decided, yes, I'm going to take over the school. So I, I took over the school and I would never have been here on Twitch had it not have been for COVID um, because I would have just continued to be a Tai Chi instructor in my local community. Um, we have a very reputable school, um, but we're local. Uh, Twitch has given me, uh, the COVID gave me an opportunity to come online and, um, you know, being online, it's new territory for me. Having that switch in mentality of seeing myself as just a pure educator into the world of content creation is um, definitely taking a long time for me to fully make that switch. Um, yeah, it's, it's a silver lining to the dark cloud um, where it had it not been for this, I would never have been able to reach people from around the world. You know, so um, now I'm learning this whole new world. The approach is different. Um, I feel like it's, uh, 
I, I'm, I, I don't know anything and I'm learning and I'm trying to learn as I go. And um, like one of the people who um, I have been listening to intently um, is Devin Nash, actually. Um, and uh, just because he like what I um, saw, I think. I, I, I went into his chat and he uses the yin yang. I don't know if anyone here is um a, who uh, is part of Devin Nash's community, but he has the yin yang symbol. Um and uh like everything he says I, I'm just resonating with. So um like that is my my marker for success as a content creator is if one day I do this right. I want to be interviewed by Devin Nash. That's how I will know that I did this thing right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, plans. Pfft, right. Like you can have the best plan and uh, what happens when it doesn't work out? You just have to go with it. So, you know, I think that my Tai Chi training has allowed me to be able to just kind of go with all the changes because everything changes everything changes and that's like the essence of this philosophy um i've been with my husband for a really really long time um we first started dating when we were both 17. we met our freshman year in college um now i'm 46 he's you know 45 he'll be 46 this year so um we're totally different people than who we were when we first met we're different people than who we were when we got married we're different people than who we were when we had our two kids and um our relationship you know keeps changing and we have to keep changing so it's like if i just imagine that he needs to be the person who I first met, then um, there's no way our relationship would survive, right? I, I have to appreciate him for who he is right now, who, you know, is very different. And, and me too, I'm a very different person than who I was when we first met. So that's just like, you know, always, and I think a lot of people, they have these expectations that things should be fixed that um and then they, they things fall short of their expectation um and they want to control an outcome of the situation that's out of their control so um and that's everyone that every single person um experiences that so some people are able to go with the change better if you practice taiji you are guaranteed to um go with that change better because that's your training. That's what we're training you to do. Um, when you do it solo exercises, but then once we put physical force on you, because, you know, Taiji, it's a martial art. So there's contact actually. Um, the, the push hands aspect is somebody's trying to push you down. And so when somebody has their hand on you, trying to push you down, um, you're going to react a certain way. And when you learn that your resistance to that push isn't going to land you on the ground, you learn pretty quickly how to adapt to that. <laughs>